I had an opening for this video, but I'm going to make a new one. This is what I'm going to be doing right here. This little turning. And this one here is a hybrid. Part closed and part open segment. Now the reason I'm redoing this because when I started out and planned this, I planned to have it all closed segments and I had a pattern that I wanted to put in here. And I build it up, build it up to the pattern, put the pattern rings on. And when I looked at it, I didn't like it. I drew it on paper first. I had it in my mind. I thought it would look good, but I did, just did not like it. So I cut the pattern rings off, and then I went with open segments here. So what I'm really trying to say is, as far as I'm concerned, nothing's written in stone. If I don't like it, I'll cut it off and do something else, because I don't have a, something sitting around that I just don't like. I said, well, I should have done something better with it, or I should have done this. So I just go ahead, cut it off, and did this, and this is what I ended up with. So, it took a long time without doing it. I hurt my hand. Dang, sort of stole over. And then... We had a nice hurricane come through, and then I had to work on the generator after the hurricane was gone. So it took a while to do this, but it's complete now. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with this project. Hello, glad you could join me in the shop today. Today I'm going to be doing something quite a bit different. I'm going to make a vessel, kind of odd shape, come up around, and then way up tall on the top. I've got it drawn out here. What I'm going to do, I drew it in two parts here. The bottom, then I'm going to come up, and then kind of sweep it back, and then this is the second half going to come straight up. I'm going to make this out of Peruvian walnut and holly. I got some holly here. And I haven't got too much. I'm going to be stingy with it. It's hard to get good holly around here. And it's expensive. So I'm going to stretch it as much as I can. And of course I got plenty of Peruvian walnut. Peruvian walnut's easy enough to get. And the bottom, bottom's going to be about six inches across here, about six inches across. And I'm going to use wenge for the bottom. I got a piece of wenge here ready to go. Put it in the cold jaws. And like I always do, I'm going to cut a mortise in it and cut a ring around it so I can put it in the chuck. Now, on these bottom segments here, and on all the top segments, these segments here, I'm going to put trim in by putting thin pieces of holly between the segments. I'm going to use 24 segments on this. I need 24 segments in the pattern area. So I'm going to only put 12 spacers between the segments, about this thick. This is about almost an eighth of an inch. Also, I'm going to put a thin holly ring here, and then I'm going to put one above and below the pattern ring. Now the pattern ring... I'm going to build it the same way by using spacers of holly between the segments. So the actual pattern ring will just be spacers. I'll show you how I'm going to do that when I get to it. So the first thing I'm going to do is make the base. Then I'm going to use this to put the thin ring on because I, 
Normally making a thin ring, I'd make a thick ring, put it on and part it. But I haven't got enough holly to do that with. So I'm going to cut segments from this. And I'm going to glue them on one at a time, just like open segments, only they'll be closed segments. Sometimes I'll have to adjust an angle, and then when I get to the last piece, I'll have to cut it to fit. And I'm not going to worry about where the joints fall. Don't really make no difference in pieces thin. You can't really see the joints either. So I'll show you what I'm going to do on them as I go. So first thing I'm going to do is prepare the base like I normally do. So I'm going to get it prepared and put it on the chuck. So the bottom's prepared now. It's dished a little. The edge has been flattened, sanded flat. And I'm going to put a thin ring of this on it. I'm going to use these. Like I said, I ain't got enough material to make a big ring and then split it and turn it down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut 23 segments from this. I'm going to make it six and a quarter inch ring. I'm not going to cut the 24th segment. And it's going to be 0.8228 cut distance. So I'm going to go ahead and cut up 23 segments. Now I'm going to do these on one at a time, just as though they were open segments, but they're going to be closed segments. Something I don't do very often, only when I don't have enough of the wood and it's expensive. Ah, oh, where's my paper? There it is. Put it just at the right distance. right. First one I'm going to clamp it down and hold it for a while. Use it to push the others up against. Just leave it clamped there for a bit, for a couple of minutes. Now I can start adding segments one at a time. like I would with open segments. In this case, I'll push it right up tight against the first one. I'm going to go ahead and add 23 segments to it. I've got them on now. Of course the last piece is not going to fit. Sometimes it's a bigger space, sometimes it's a narrower space. The angles ain't always the same. So what I do, put a piece in there, then I mark it. The top and the very bottom. Then I'm going to draw a line and sand it to fit. Now it fits perfect. 
I put a little glue on it, I'll glue it in, I'll clamp them all down, leave them for a while, 15 minutes or so. I can put plenty of glue on this one. If it squeezes out the sides on this, I don't care. I'll just clamp her down and leave her now for a while. Make sure that's pushed in good. That ought to be tight enough. Okay, now just leave them a while. Okay, I'm ready to put on the first full ring. The first full ring is going to be 8 inches in diameter. It's going to be a wide ring, a little over one and a quarter inch. Now what I'm going to do is put eight spacers in it. So that means every third segment there will be a spacer. Now the cut length for 24 segments for 8 inch is 1.0532 but I've got to take into account I've got eight spacers in there. So I've got 1.0532 for the segment length. I'm going to put in spacers of 0.12 inch. There's eight of them. But I'm only going to put one every third segment. So I divide 1.2 by 3, which gives me 0.04. I've got to subtract from each segment. So 1.532 minus 0.04. I need to cut 24 segments at 1.0132. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut 24 segments at 1.0132. And I'm going to make 8 spacers at 0.12 inches. I've got 24 segments cut and sanded. 8 spacers. i got them dry clamped. Checking to make sure all the joints are tight. Now, if you watch my video on a basic segmented ring, you'll know when you do a single ring glue up, the joints aren't tight. I'll adjust the angle on one segment. But these are tight, so I'm going to go ahead and glue this one up. It's exactly 8 inches. Come out exactly 8 inches. And I've got the spacers just where I want them. Three segments between them. I got the ring glued up now. Ready to put it in the cold jaws, flatten and sand one side. Which I'm going to do. Now you may be wondering why I use 24 segments and put spacers every third one. And there's a reason for that. And I got these spacers on this drawing mark on purple when actually in actuality they're white. But by doing that, I can line them up like this so that the second ring sits right in the middle and I can still get brick laid segments. I can't do that if I put spacers under between every one or between every second one. It's got to be between every third one to come out right. And you can see that later. And also, what I didn't mention before is the overall shape. Can't see it on that drawing. We is going. To, I wanted something like this, fat on the bottom, and then a real tall, skinny neck. Got the first ring now ready to smooth up, which I'm going to do on the cold jaws, and then I'll glue it on. Okay, I'm ready to glue it on. Because this ring is so thin, the strength from the bottom 
will hold the next ring. I'm not worried about where the joints are going to fall at all. And the fact that you won't be able to see the joints on this small ring. And like I said, you'll get long grain glue up across the joints. It will feed through from the bottom piece because of the thinness of this. So I'm just going to go ahead and glue it and let it fall where it may on this ring. Put a little glue on it. Make sure the glue spread around good. Get the glue everywhere. Tighten her down a bit. Mm. There we go. There we go. Okay. Put some wax paper on to keep the glue off the lathe. Tighten her a little bit more. We're just going to let her set for a bit and we're going to start making the next ring. I got the second ring turned, sanded. I got this turned, flattened, sanded. Turned the inside just a little bit right now. I put a mark right here where I want the spacer on this ring to line up. So I'll know exactly where to put it to get it lined up correctly. So I'm just going to go ahead and glue this ring on. A little glue on it. That should be enough. Spread the glue out some. Now I'll line the spacer up with the mark I got. Right there. Clamp her down. Let her sit for 15 minutes or more and we're good. I have got the three bottom rings on now. That's these three right here. Now the next seven rings are going to build the feature portion of it. They're all going to be part of a feature ring. So I'm going to put a thin white ring between them. I'm going to isolate the features with a thin, thin white ring top and bottom. And I'm going to put it on the same way I did before. Just like it, putting on open segments almost. I'm going to put one on. Not a stupid phone. Now, just like the last time. I'll put the first, first piece on, get it lined up, just like I want it. I got it right over a joint. And I'm going to clamp it down and leave it set so that I can push the next one up against it without it moving. So I'm just going to let it set for a while and then I'll glue up the rest of them. That way I'll be able to push it up tight and it won't slide and move around on me. The bottom part here is finished. The base and the first three big rings. And the small white ring here. Now I've got the 
seven rings that's going to develop the pattern. These seven rings are all going to be half inch tall and they're all going to be 24 segments and they're all going to have 24 spacers in them. I'm going to develop the pattern with the spacers by using Peruvian walnut for some spacers and holly for the other spacers. I think I can develop a pattern. The pattern I'm looking for, I draw too many patterns on one sheet, but the pattern I'm trying to build will be this one right here. Right there, that pattern. I'm going to do it, like I said, with seven rings. And each of the spacers is going to be half inch tall and half inch wide, so they'll be square. And, of course, the segments yourselves will be Peruvian walnut. So the first ring is going to be 10 inch diameter. It's going to be 24 segments. But i got to subtract the distance from the, for the uh, spacers. So 24 segments at 10 inches. 10 inches, 24 segments is 1.3165. So, so 1.3165. Now subtract a half inch from for the spacers minus 0.5. Give me 0.8165 for the size of the segment. So I need 24 segments at 0.8165. So I need to cut two rings that size. The first ring here and the top ring there will be the same diameter. So I'll just, and they're going to be the same pattern also. So I'll, I'll go ahead and make those two rings at one time. So first thing I think I got to do is make some stock for half inch rings. Both stock for the segments and for the spacers. Okay. The first of the seven rings I'm using to make the pattern has been glued up. It's got eight white spacers in it. The second ring I'm getting ready to glue now will have 16 spacers, white spacers in it. And eight brown ones. So the first, the fourth, and the seventh ring will all have eight. The second, third, fifth, and sixth rings will all have 16 white spacers. So I've got this cut and sanded. I'm ready to glue up the second one now. So I'm just going to go ahead and do all the rest of the rings. I got the seven rings cut made, glued up for the pattern using spacers. And this is how they'll go on, except I just realized that I don't want the white spacer next to this white ring here. So what I'm going to do is put a small dark ring between them. Right in there I'm going to put a small dark ring. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it, make a ring, and put it in there. I've got the first four pattern rings on now. And I'm looking at it, and I don't like it. A friend of mine come over, and he looks at them, and he says they look okay to him. But some of them just don't line up quite right, and I don't like it. I think what I'm going to do is part them off and go with open segments make this a hybrid turning solid segments and open segments together so I'll put in some open segment rings thing is if I don't like it I'm not going to leave it and after all I'm just playing around with patterns seeing what I can get what can be done so I'm going to part these off I'll save two of the rings I'll have to destroy the other two to part them off but I'll save two I don't know what for but I still got the other three rings too so that's what I'm going to do, is just part them off and put open segments on here. So let's do that. 
Well, I've got some stock cut now for open segments. Half the inch. Both holly and Peruvian walnut. I got some more cut over there. I'm going to stay, of course, for 24 segments per ring. Now my flew up jig. I modified it slightly. I found that if I take it off for any reason, it is a bit of a problem getting it lined back up exactly where it was. So what I did, I glued a strip across the middle, exactly square, and then I got me a piece of bar stock because my Banjo takes inch and a quarter stock. I just got a piece of bar stock from the ironworks. Cost me about a dollar. And I got a stop collar. Put the stop collar on at the right height. I never have to move it. Just drop it in. And when I sit this on, I'll slide the banjo up until the stop collar rests against here. Of course, it can slide back and forth because that's on there square. So it'll come out the same, even if I take it off after doing some segments to turn the inside, I can put it right back on and get it lined up right exactly the same, no problem. Now, being as how I plan to use this with other lays, with other lays, I just got me some bolts and cut the heads off. I think these are a bit too long, I'll probably have to get some more, shorter ones. But this is three quarter. No, this, excuse me, it's one inch. This is three quarter. This is five eighths. So it should cover just about any lay. And right now I've only got one stop collar. I gotta buy, gotta buy two more. They cost about three dollars each, so that's no big deal. So I'm gonna get ready to set this up to do open segments on. Like I said I'm using 24 segments, so I'll use the 48 index on a wheel. So I'm going to have to adjust my stop here down to 48. I'll get it adjusted. Mount this up. up underneath it, right there, and lock her down. I'm good to go. Slide it on up. Do I get it just where I want it? Okay, the first open segment rings will be about ten and a quarter inches. So ten and a quarter inches, twenty-four open segments. Ten and a quarter. And twenty-four open segments, 0.9446, so 0 0.945, 0 0.944, I'll go ahead and cut some segments, I'm going to cut 8 from Holly and 16 from Proving Walnut, basically the same pattern I had before, starting the pattern ring all over again with open segments, I got them cut all half inch thick, all the smooth sides have been smooth. I put them on in groups of six or 24 of them. I got them lined up in the sequence they go on using the 48 index. Every other one, of course, for this ring. I've got the tailstock locked. I've got the quill locked. I've got the banjo locked. So this is right solid. I've got the stop block set. 
at five and one eighth inches for a ten and a quarter inch ring. Five and an eighth inch from the center mark. So I'm good to go, ready to start gluing them on. Glue them on, ten seconds for each one. All right, let's go, ten seconds. A light layer of type bound two. Very light layer. Get a light layer, you don't have to clean out the squeeze up because there's not enough to even worry about. Very, very light layer. Okay, 10 seconds. Okay, let's go to the next index. Here we go. Let's put another on. Very light layer of glue. Very light. There we go. Again, 10 seconds. Okay, I'll just go ahead and keep on gluing the rest of them on. 15 minutes since I glued the last one on. I got them all chalked. Got the sanding board, I'm just going to sand the chalk off of them. Make sure they're all flat. Okay, the chalk's gone. I'm going to flip it over and use the smooth side on it one time. Put on the next row, and we're good to go. Ready to glue on the next row, and I got the segments cut. This time, first time I used the unmarked index. This time I used the marked indexes. Let's see. I want to start it. I want to start it right there. I think. Yeah, got to start it right there. So I'm ready to go glue. I'm just going to glue on the second ring, same way I did the first one. Well, this turning got put on hold for a little bit. I hurt my hand, and my wife kept me out of the shop for some days. And then we had this nice hurricane come through. You know, people on the coast got it pretty bad, but right here, we were pretty lucky. Of course, we lost power for three or four days, but as far as the rain, the big heavy rain bands kept going north of us and then south of us and north of us so we didn't get really hard hit with the rain not too bad at all right here for about oh five mile area here anyway we're back now and i had to take a generator apart got a new bearing on order so i'm gonna have to put that in when it comes in now we got the bottom part of the turning finished right here and where the open segments are the inside's got to be turned and smooth and finished because people can look through the open segments and see it and in the bottom here you can turn it and finish it and turn it as much or as little as you want do need to put finish on to protect the wood and the same thing goes with the top half now I got the all the rings cut for the top half, one half smoothed and sanded, one side smoothed and sanded. And normally, I would mount this on a face plate and then build it out so I could turn the inside real easy and sand it and finish it. But because this don't need that much turning, sanding and finishing, I'm just going to go ahead and try gluing them on the bottom piece and work out. So these are ready to go. I'm going to start gluing them on after I remount the face. And for the neck, now normally I won't use 12 or 8 segments. I will use them when I have to, but not normally. Now because this neck is going to be so skinny, so small, I'm going to go with 8 segments. 
Now, like I said, I normally don't like them because of the grain direction in them. So, this is the first one. Actually, it's a transition one. The next one, all the rest of them are going to be a little bit smaller than this. So, I'm going to use eight segments on these simply because they're so small. And to flatten them, I'm going to use the disc sounder just to flatten one side. Just, again, because they're so small be the easiest way to do it. So I'm going to go ahead, remount the bottom, start doing rings on, and start making neck pieces with eight segments. So I got two rings on. First ring I put on in the middle of this segment. Then I measured the center of the seg segment here and put this trim piece right on the center. Now I'm going to put the third ring on. I want to make sure it's lined up with the first one. And you can measure the center of a segment if you want. But I found a sure way to do it is run a string from the center of the tailstock, the center of the headstock, and all I have to do is just line it up on that string. Actually, all I have to do right now is just make a mark as to where it goes and I'll be good to go. So I'll take that string and I'll keep it. Every one I put on, I'll use the string to make sure they all line up on it. Okay, I'm starting to put on the neck pieces now. I've got all the top pieces put on. Got the inside turned pretty good. I didn't really sand them super smooth, put finish on them. Now, on the neck pieces, instead of turning them, I'm just going to run a Forstner bit through them, like that. So, I'm going to go ahead and run that Forstner bit through it. You'll notice I've got the steady rest on it. I had to turn the steady rest backwards to keep the arms from hitting the rings up here. But that's okay. As soon as I get more neck pieces on, I'll move the steady rest forward and put it on the neck pieces. Keep it moving out as I go. So I'm going to go ahead and just drill this one out with a Forstner bit, flatten it and glue some more on, keep doing it. I've got half of the neck pieces on. I've got seven of them on. I'm going to put 14. Got seven more cut. I've got the steady rest here. Now I've smoothed the spot up here so I can move the steady rest up. I like it, keep it close to the work. It makes it a lot easier. And I've got this turned flat and I got it chalked. But because this is so small, it's really hard to hold a big sanding board against it and get it flat. So what I'm gonna do, take a stick of wood, hold some 100 grit sandpaper over it, and just hold that up against it. It's much easier than that big sanding board on something small. Just like this. There we go, perfectly flat, ready to put on the next ring. So I'm going to, yeah, move a steady rest up here, and then I'm going to start gluing on more rings. The, about the last of this project, and I'm going to start turning the outside, of course, that don't take long, put it between centers. This is the last of the neck pieces. After that, I've got segments cut for the white ring that goes up there and I've got a piece made for the for the top Makassar ebony I decided on anyway the last one's going on then I'm going to put the white pieces on the same way I did back here the exact same way then I'm going to put the top piece on I'm going to finish turning the center this center here I've just been cutting it out with a with a Forstner bit and I wrap some sandpaper around the stick, cut a 
notch in the end, wrap some sandpaper around it, get in there and I can sand it pretty good. Let's take a look, see at that one time. No big deal. Don't want to run it too fast. I can get in there and sand it real good. I'll have to put a paper towel on the end of the stick and put shellac on it to get it down in there too. But that's okay. I can use the same stick after I get it sanded. But anyway, that's how I'm going to sand it out. I still got one more before I do the final sanding. So, that's it. I'm going to go ahead and do this on. I've got my alignment marks here where I want to put it. So, just put a little glue on it, bring it up, spin it around, line it up with the marks, and I'm good to go. Okay, I got the steady rest off of it. Got it between centers. I got it mostly turned. We'll have to sand it down now. Make sure I get all the some of it got some little spots of tear out. I gotta get them out. Then uh put some finish on it and turn it over and do the bottom. So like I said it's between centers now. I love to turn between centers when I can. So I'm just gonna go ahead. I'm gonna start with some rough sandpaper in a few places to get the tear out out. Got a little bit of tear out here and there. Not too much, but I got some. After that, I'm just going to give it a quick pass with each grit. But first I got to take the tear out, probably use 80 or 100 to get the tear out out. Then I'll just make quick passes. So, it's getting there. I'm almost off the lathe now. Okay. It's off the lathe now. It's got 14 rings in the neck, not counting these transition rings right here. And got seven high on the open segments. I didn't turn the bottom a whole lot. It's kind of scary turning the bottom. So I turned it, but not a whole lot. And this is what I come up with. Now, like I said at the start, it took a while to do this because of all the circumstances surrounding it. But I hope you learned something or I hope you enjoyed the video. I appreciate everybody that watches and I really appreciate those that subscribe. That helps me know how many people are actually watching. So that being said, thank you and come back and see my next video.